Yeah, this, this archive right here is the testament. It is the Death Sea Scrolls, like you were saying, of skateboarding because there weren't videos back then. There's not videos, there's not internet, there's not anything else that, document, that has documentation of skateboarding besides these magazines. And there were a few other ones like Skateboard World and stuff, but this was the Bible of skateboarding at that time and had every top pro, every best photographer was contributing to this magazine. So this is skateboarding encapsulated from that time. Uh, give me any, any other ideas <laughs> you got and tell us what you've been doing for the last 45 years. Oh, uh, my name is Richard Novak, and I'm sitting here under quite a lot of duress talking to Lee. Um, so he wants to ask me some questions about what happened in the past. Anyway. The industry in the 60s was Makaha and Vitapak, and it was a fad and it was con totally controlled by the roller skate industry. And then in the first run of the early 70s, they took the product that was left over from the 60s and the 50s, and they tried it, to run it out as a fad, pretty much still under the thumb of the roller skate industry. The first time we spotted the potential was about November of 1974. We did a little research amongst our advertisers who were presently advertising skateboard products in Surfer. They said yes, they would be interested, uh, very interested in a skateboard publication. So that's when we started preliminary work and we came out with the first issue in June of 1975. And so Skateboarder came along uh, and we came along and Ron Bennett came along and GNS and Bill Bain and we were able to pull the industry out of the roller skate world and make it a real industry. How's that? You have Warren Bolster, who's the editor of Skateboarder. I mean, the dude, A, a Bolster could surf, also, he also could shoot surfing, but he was like this guy who was pushing photography as well, and he's shooting skateboarding as though it's surfing in urban areas, like on ditches and pools and banks on the street, everything. This photo was uh, taken by Warren Bolster. He was a staff photographer for, uh, for Surfer Magazine. And then um, when skateboarding started getting strong, he was, he was a skater himself, or you know, would skate at La Costa with us. And then, he, so he'd start taking photos, and then just really kind of saw the writing in the wall that there was a need for a skateboarder magazine. So he pitched that to Surfer Magazine, and um, basically, uh, like I said, yeah, he was, he was in charge. Well, they had skateboarder before, in the 60s, and it went, they did four issues, and it, the sport died off then, so he says, let's bring it back again. So the second time around in the mid-70s, Warren pushes and gets it back and starts out as a bi-monthly. This one inspired not only myself, but thousands of other young men and women to um, further push their limits. Let's face it, the picture Greg Weaver, you know, down in the I always love that photo. And Steve Cathy doing the same thing, you know. And, and then there's, you know, Bruce Logan and Jay doing the fucking nose wheelies and all that kind of thing. There's so many guys at that time frame because they had found like a whole new development. There was no houses yet. They just they had the roads. They were in there on weekends when there was no one around and they could do what the hell they wanted. So that's kind of how it was in the 70s where like they had so much more land in those days. Everything wasn't as built up. So whenever you kind of found anything or did anything, it was almost like you were on your own. In the beginning, there was Warren, Leroy Granis, and you know Jim O'Mahony, and those guys were the guys running the magazine. So they, everybody was looking at what they were doing with their you know fish eyes and stuff, and copying them, and then coming up with their own own look. It obviously comes from surfing photography whatever the magazine came from a you know they made surfing magazine and they shot surfing and it was an extension outside of that so there's some sort of aesthetic that comes from surfing a lot of the photographers had the same angles and everything but they're capturing for the very first time things that had not been done so of course the photos are amazing I mean you're capturing the moon landing <laughs> right all fake and everything Every single kid read the magazine from cover to cover. 
and they read every caption, they read every story, they looked at every photo. And you could run into a kid that, that was from Nebraska and he could and, and you'd, you'd reference a picture and they and they would say yeah that was that caption it was page 42 everybody did that getting the magazine in february in montana was the highlight of my week you just laid in your bed and looked at the magazine and you couldn't wait for the snow to melt i was living it but they were living vicariously through these pages and then they were had to decipher this and apply it to their local scene it was the magazine pipeline It's, it's almost like you're looking at like the, the, the encyclopedia or something like, this is it. You know what I mean? You're looking at it and you're, this is it. This is the holy grail every month. James Casmus, skateboard photographer from 1976 to probably to the end of the skateboard beginning of Action Now era, probably like 1982. After Warren, you know, moved away from the magazine, King James became the photo editor. And so he was in charge of shit, so he was the motherfucking king. Back then, you'd look, you wouldn't just go through the magazine and look at it, you'd, you'd get the photo, the magazine of the photo, and you'd sit there and study it. You'd look, you'd stare at things for five or ten minutes. You know, I, I looked at what, you know, Warren Bolster was doing and studying his photography. In those days, it wasn't, you know, instant gratification like today. Every time you got a roll of film back from being processed, it was like Christmas. Sometimes you wouldn't get a lot of stuff, and then all of a sudden you get the, the full-on gems. Couldn't even believe that you shot that. 